Hello there. This is Music Man 0150, also known as Gary. And uh, I thought I would give another demonstration of my Ensonic keyboard. I gave a little demonstration on the uh, on the first video when I was uh, introducing the keyboards in general. But I thought I'd go ahead and uh, give a little more detailed demonstration of the Insonic SQ2 in case any of you uh, YouTube viewers that are musicians out there still own one of these. And uh, it's a very nice keyboard. This was the very first keyboard that I uh, bought and have owned it for almost 20 years. It's about uh, 17, well to be 17 years in November. So it's about 16 and a half years that I've owned this keyboard and it's it's still holding up very very well. I've had the uh, battery changed on it twice because uh, they only last probably about six, five, six, maybe seven years at the at the most. So um, as far as uh, service goes on it, that's the only thing that's been done with it is the battery being changed. Uh, that keeps the memory. So when you turn the unit off, everything stays intact. Your sequences or your sound banks, they stay intact. You don't have to reload them every time. So let me see if I got sound on here and yeah we do. Okay. Now it's set right now to a setting called Dynamic Grand and as you can hear it's very very responsive. I mean it doesn't have it doesn't have the uh, full velocity that like uh, the modern keyboards today have but as you notice, when I'm hitting soft, the notes are soft, and when I hit loud, the notes are loud. So basically it does have the real velocity feature. So that's, that's actually good. And um, there's all kinds of different sounds on here. Uh, here's a classic grand. It almost sounds like the dynamic, but it's a little more it's a little more of a darker sound as opposed to the uh, dynamic grand. It's not as not as brassy or tinny. Here's a pop grand. Now that one that one sounds more like tinny, you might say, or more bright. It's brighter. Um, some of the other patches that I have on here. You can, you can say that's kind of more like a world type patch. Uh, that one is called Guitar... No, Outer Limits. Outer Limits. It's kind of, it's uh, it's a little bit harsh. It's it's more like if you're trying to create uh, world music, you know, probably like from uh, the style that they use in China or Italy or something like that. That's probably a good uh, sound patch for that. Here's a brass uh, sound with a little bit of a saxophone in there too. And if you notice, when I was hitting the key real hard, it kind of waves. There's a pitch bend in there. That's that's it kind of simulates an overblow on the brass if you're uh, you know if you're blowing too hard. But if you hit it nice and light, it sounds sounds real pure, real real stable on the pitch. Um, some of the drum kits. It's got drum kits.
This one is called um, a big old rock kit. And as you notice, a lot of these uh, kits on this particular keyboard are laid out uh, a lot differently than your general MIDI drum kits are laid out. So if you're trying to if you're trying to play a general MIDI uh, file through the Insonic SQ2, um, it's not going to work with the internal drum kits. What you have to do is you have to go into the edit mode, the sound edit mode, and you have to assign a key, a specific key for that instrument in order to make it compatible for general MIDI uh, drum kits. Or like if uh, you have another keyboard, say like the Juno G keyboard or the RD700SX, and you want to run uh, MIDI through it. You want to run MIDI out from one of those two to the Insonic SQ2 on MIDI in, and you want to play the drum kits, again, you're going to have to assign a key for that particular sound in order to make it work right. So I've done that, and I've got the uh, sound settings even backed up on a floppy disk. And just want to show you the difference between the general MIDI kits of today and what you just heard. So now, with that setting, uh, I'm able to play general MIDI uh, kits from the other keyboards and generate the sounds from here. Uh, I did have to split it, though, because the memory back at that time was very limited. So I have um, three settings, three, three banks of general MIDI kits. This is the first quarter of it. There's actually three quarters of the spectrum on the keyboard. This is the first. Right there it stops. So I got another setting that continues that from here. See, that's the second setting I had to use. Okay, and then notice right there it ends again. So I had to make a third uh, user setting. Oops, wrong setting. There we go. So here's the third setting of the, of the MIDI kit that I created on here. Okay, and that's, that's basically it. Now the third setting uh, is actually not exactly like it would be because of the sound uh, capabilities that the, in, the Insonic SQ2 has. It, because of the sound limitations on this keyboard, I kind of had to improvise on the third on the third section of, of my uh, created general MIDI drum kit. So as you can hear, most of those keys are like one sound but different pitches. And then I got a couple keys that are the same pitch, same sound, same pitch. That way I can do uh, fast things like that, on like tambourine effects or, or cowbells. I got different cowbell sounds modified, finger snaps, and that's, that's basically it. I don't use that one that much. Uh, the, the first two sections I do, though. Occasionally, I'll use the third section that I made. So that kind of gives you a little overview of some of the sounds. Uh, in part two of this, I want to show you how the sequencer uh, works on here. Uh, so uh, come back for part two, and uh, we'll go from there.